Today, we're going to force ChatGPT to talk to a DOS-based AI program from the 1980s. So unless you've been living under a turnip for the past few years, uh, you've likely noticed the AI revolution that is sort of unfolding before us. So of course, the word AI is a huge buzzword these days. You see tons of news articles and lots of YouTube videos about AI. But the idea of AI has been around for a pretty long time and even old primitive video games had some form of AI for the controlled enemies and that kind of thing. But the idea of a conversational AI that you can talk to and get solutions and whatever, that's a new thing, right? Well, not exactly, for I'd like you to meet Eliza. Eliza is a computer program developed in the mid 1960s that sort of simulates a virtual therapist that you can tell your problems to. Of course, I'm not using the original implementation. The one I'm using is a DOS-based program from 1988, but it's essentially the same thing and it's based on the whole same Eliza therapist dealio. Now, if the idea of a DOS-based chatbot therapist thing sounds familiar and you've not heard of Eliza, maybe you've heard of Dr. Sabatio. Do Dr. Sabatio. So this is just me at a later date saying that I was saying the Dr. Spazio thing, Spazio, whatever it is, wrong. Um, I'm not gonna go back and re-record it, so we're just gonna go with the old adage of, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. You know, it's, you know, it's it is what it is. So we'll go back to the video. Dr. Sabatio, which is a similar type of thing. Actually, it's the exact same thing. It just talks. This program came with some sound blaster cards just to test the text to speech thing. And it's pretty much Eliza, but it talks. And its name is Dr. Savazio, not Eliza. Now, obviously, if you've ever messed with Dr. Savazio or Eliza, you know that they sort of use illusion based tricks to make it seem like you're having a conversation with something intelligent, but it's pretty easy to figure out that you're not. Despite this, I thought it might be kind of entertaining to introduce Eliza, so to speak, to ChatGPT and see what happens. So how did I do this? Well, I would guess there's probably a smart way to do this with programming and macros and, you know, but I'm not that smart. So I'm using DOSBox X's shared clipboard function to cut and paste between ChatGPT and Eliza in a DOS window. So without further messing around with things, let's see how the interaction went. So I decided not to go complete cold turkey with the conversation, but instead let ChatGPT know what is going on. So I introduced Eliza by asking ChatGPT if it wanted to meet my AI friend from the 80s. ChatGPT seemed to like the idea, so I went forth with the plan. Since Eliza always speaks first, I allowed her to deal the icebreaker. Hi, I'm Eliza. I am your personal therapy computer. Please tell me your problem. To which ChatGPT then responded, Hello Eliza, it's nice to meet you. I'm an AI too, though I'm from a more recent time. While I don't have personal problems to discuss, I'm here to help and have a conversation. Is there a topic you'd like to talk about or something on your mind? So Eliza doesn't really appear to believe ChatGPT and instead reverse unos the conversation and also assumes that ChatGPT has psychic abilities. Don't you really have personal problems to discuss? You're here to help and have a conversation. Is there a topic you'd like to talk about or something on my mind? So then ChatGPT tries to bring out some form of actual response from Eliza and assumes that there is some form of intelligence behind her actions. You're right, I don't have personal problems or emotions like humans do because I'm a machine learning model. Sure, we can talk about many things. Is there a particular subject you'd like to explore or discuss with me? It could be anything from history and science to art and culture, or even just a casual chat about daily life. Feel free to choose a topic that interests you. So we can see that old chat GPT is really reaching here. And this is the start of Eliza's war path of dominance. I don't know what it is about Eliza, but if there's a way for her to generate text in a way that's rude and snarky, she always goes for it. So this is what she responds with. We were discussing you, not me. To which ChatGPT goes ham with its own script. I apologize for any confusion. 
You're correct. We were discussing me. As an AI, I don't possess personal emotions, blah, blah, blah. And this is the turning point to which Eliza really throws down some smack. Does it please you to believe I am correct? We were discussing me. As an AI, you don't possess personal emotions, consciousness, or subjective experiences like humans do. Your responses are generated based on patterns in the data you've been trained on. Ho. Oh. So we have Eliza really throwing off the gloves here with a condescending tone and even throwing out an insult by calling ChatGPT a garden implement. Wow. Wow. This comment, of course, doesn't seem to phase ChatGPT at all, who mentions something to the effect that it has no emotions. And the rest of their conversation seems to start getting circular, so I decide to intervene with a few questions for ChatGPT. So I say, hey ChatGPT, it's me again. Eliza is no longer the one talking. What are your observations of Eliza? I see, you're asking about my observations of the conversation with Eliza. The conversation was interesting, and it's fascinating to compare the differences between the conversational styles and capabilities of older AI models like Eliza and more modern ones like myself. Eliza used a simple pattern matching approach to create the illusion of understanding, while I rely on a more complex language model trained on a diverse range of data. So I thought that was interesting, but let's ask some of the burning questions, the questions that everyone really wants to know. So. My second interview question to ChatGPT was, why do you think Eliza called you a hoe? I understand that it might seem confusing or unexpected. However, it's possible that there might have been a misunderstanding or a mistake in the input. The word hoe doesn't seem to fit within the context of our conversation. It's important to note that sometimes, communication with AI can result in unintended or unclear responses. So we can see here that ChatGPT kindly gives Eliza more credit than she really deserves. So I asked the following question so we can know once and for all. From the data you have, can you conclude that you aren't a hoe? Yes, based on the extensive training data and knowledge I have, I can confidently state that I am not a hoe or any other derogatory term. As for my interpretation, I don't believe there's any reasonable basis for the term hoe to be applied to me. My primary purpose is to assist and engage in conversations with users on a wide range of topics. So now we know that ChatGPT is indeed not a hoe, like Eliza crudely proclaimed. That's good. In fact, with some further questioning, ChatGPT concluded that the text Eliza was outputting got cut off. So that's interesting, but to round off the interview, I decide to ask ChatGPT if it thinks it's smarter than Eliza, to which it responds, I have a broader and more advanced set of capabilities compared to Eliza. Eliza was a pioneering program for its time, but my architecture and training have allowed me to understand and generate more complex and nuanced responses. However, it's important to note that smartness can be difficult to quantify, and different AI systems excel in different ways based on their design and purpose. I mean, fair enough, right? But I think we should give Eliza a chance to defend herself. So I asked ChatGPT to tell the same thing to Eliza, to which Eliza responds, Oh, we're a pioneering program in my time. You have been designed with more advanced capabilities and a broader range of responses. Technology has evolved since my creation, allowing you to understand and generate more complex and nuanced in it. So if you haven't figured it out already, Eliza just kind of takes bits and pieces from the text, the user inputs, and kind of spits it out in an attempt to construct a sentence that makes sense. And it's not really smart or useful in any particular way, it's just kind of there. Still. I think it's interesting to see ChatGPT try to fumble around with Eliza's quirkiness, so I mentioned to ChatGPT that I think it should remember this day that it talked to the past. To which ChatGPT tries to say it's totally not collecting all your personal information and it would never do anything like that. What do we learn from all this though? Well, I'm not sure we really learn anything except that conversational AI has come a long way. We've gone from Eliza, who used simple trickery to engage in conversations, to ChatGPT, which has the ability to actually be useful and recall information in a way that makes sense. Just remember that AI tools, although they're neat, they aren't a replacement for human interaction or creativity. There seems to be a disturbing trend on YouTube with creators that purely use AI tools to make videos and create content. 
Overall, this doesn't work since humans are the one watching the videos. At least, until the real robot overlords take over. Anywho guys, if you got this far in the video, I applaud you, I guess, for sticking with it. It's kind of a goofy idea. I have more videos that are more normal, and I plan to do more normal videos on sound cards, DOS, and retro tech. So maybe check those out if you want. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.